Mirrorless cameras are hot and getting hotter. I want to help you find the right one for creating great photos and terrific video. Today we're going to take a look at the Fujifilm X-Pro1, which is a rather different camera than most mirrorless systems. If we compare it to other cameras in this category, we find the X-Pro to be bigger, heavier, more expensive, and harder to learn than, say, the Sony NEX5N or the Lumix GX1 or the Olympus EP3. In fact, when I was first introduced to this camera, I was prepared to not like it because of a handful of reasons, like the lack of advanced video controls and the unique lens mount that Fuji chose to use instead of the Micro Four Thirds. And this camera only has three lenses at the time I'm recording this. And the retro style of this camera that I think is, is both stupid and ugly. <laughs> my opinion. So I admit it, I had a bad attitude going into this. But after shooting this camera for months, I love it. It's tough to overlook the $1,700 price tag for the body alone, but the images that it creates are stunning. And isn't that what matters? I'm Will Crockett. I'm a pro photographer, owner and chief tech advisor of a few large photo websites, I've worked as a consultant to some huge companies in the photo industry, and I even get to report my latest photo fun facts to the great men and women who work in the Pentagon. And now I'm learning the next generation of cameras in my migration to mirrorless. As we migrate from shooting DSLRs to shooting with smaller, lighter, more powerful mirrorless systems, mark this Fuji camera down in history as the first mirrorless camera that can replace a professional photographer's DSLR. For instance, if you shoot weddings or corporate events, you'll find that this camera will help you shoot without flash, but with high ISOs with remarkable quality. The design of the X-Pro also has this little sense of humor that I've learned to appreciate that recalls some of the camera functions from the film days, like adjusting the aperture setting by rotating the ring on the base of the lens instead of a thumb wheel or a menu item. It's fun, and it's simple, and it's very intuitive, and I warmed up to it super, super quickly. So I apologize, Fuji, for having a bad attitude. So if you're looking for a mirrorless camera that takes superb still photos, only good to maybe very good video, and you want a camera that's not your run-of-the-mill mirrorless camera, the Fujifilm X-Pro1 may be the perfect camera for you. Why? Let's take a look at this camera's vital signs. The X-Pro1 has a 16 megapixel sensor that's physically large for a mirrorless camera, so it gives you wonderful control over your depth of field. That's the ratio, by the way, between sharp to blurry sections of your photo or video. It also has a totally off-the-hook hybrid viewfinder that has an easy-to-reach lever that allows you to toggle between shooting it as an optical finder, which shows you the image as it's coming into the lens, or flip it over to the electronic viewfinder that shows you the image as it's coming out of the camera and being processed by all the cool stuff inside this rig. This is cool. Or you can shoot it as a point-and-shoot off the display screen on the back if you like. All methods, great. This camera shoots JPEGs, or RAW, or a combo of JPEG and RAW, to a wide variety of SD, SDHC cards. Video is maxed out at 1080p at 24 frames per second, and it uses the MOV format, which we wish it was AVCHD, but you can't have everything, right? It does use the H.264 codec, and it writes to the standard SD cards. This camera does use more dials and knobs and switches that have a wonderful tactile response to it. And it does have its own rechargeable battery, which is good, not great. Gives you about 46 minutes of shooting full blast video with autofocus before it craps out, or you get about 400 full-size JPEGs before it poops out, but it does have an energy saver mode that allows you to use that wonderful optical viewfinder, save that battery power, and bang out about 1,100 full-size JPEGs, whoop, ready to go for that pro photographer. This camera does have an optional hand grip that I strongly recommend. It does boost that feel of confidence with the camera. 
But the grip doesn't need to come off in order to change the battery or the SD card, which is extremely annoying. You can't have everything, can you? I know. It's got a focal plane shutter that runs up to one four thousandth of a second, and the flash sync shutter speed tops out at one one hundred and eightieth of a second. So it does have some flash issues. It does have a hot shoe on the top of the camera, which we gotta have if we want to take it into the studio. It plays very nice with Pocket Wizard, so I can use this in the studio, no issue. This camera does have some optional flashes that Fujifilm makes. I believe there's three of them. They're all pretty awful and awkward, at least they're not grossly expensive. So try them if you dare, but you're on your own there. <laughs> Like all mirrorless cameras, consider this camera flashless. Sure, there's pop-up flash and there's all the other stuff that you can use, but there is no flash that works with video. Mirrorless cameras are designed to be hybrid imaging tools to allow you to shoot photo and video anytime you feel like capturing the moment with pictures that move or pictures that don't move. That means we have to get used to continuous light, like all the brand new LED lighting that's coming around the corner. As soon as that lighting's ready, we'll do reviews on that too. So, Think flashless with mirrorless, and you'll get along just fine. I do need to tell you that the learning curve on this camera is a little steep. It's made for people who are into photography. It's made for people who demand excellent image quality and people who appreciate what a premium quality camera can do for you. This is not a fully automatic intelligent auto camera like the Sony's and Lumix's. So let's take a look at the highs and lows of shooting this camera and start off with a high point that's probably my favorite feature. That's the in-camera file processing. Fujifilm is known as the creators of some of the best film in the history of photography, and they've replicated a lot of the characteristics of their best films and put them inside this camera. Who says film is dead? <laughs> well, me, actually. I've said it many times. <laughs> One of the big low points is the autofocus system on this camera. Not so terrific. You would expect, and we certainly do, that a camera that uses premium lenses like these wonderful Fujifilm lenses would have snappy sharp autofocus. Not true in this camera. In fact, the autofocus on this camera is, yeah, frustrating. So, heads up. But because of this beautiful optical viewfinder, manually focusing this camera is a great choice and very easy to use. The viewfinder is by far the best on any digital camera I've ever seen, period. Yep, it's almost as sharp as my iPad. There is no face detection technology inside this camera, which is where it feels like it may be lagging behind. That means if you're shooting a picture of a little kid climbing a tree with a strong backlight like this, you're probably going to have to manually focus this and you're going to have to use the exposure compensation dial. Cameras that have face technology, facial recognition technology, take care of most of that for you and will speed up your shoot, but the image quality this camera produces makes it all worthwhile. Another high point is the Q menu or quick menu. It's got a little button on the back of the camera right here, perfectly placed by the way, that pops up a very comprehensive menu that allows me to locate and adjust the functions that I need to change as I go through my shoot. I would like this menu to be customizable though, to allow me to put the items that I use most up into one spot, but I think it's terrific and other cameras should take <laughs> Fuji's lead on this because, hey, you ever try to go through like a pro Canon DSLR menu? Yeah. Fuji pioneered some of the early autodynamic range functions in their first breed of digital cameras, and they've almost perfected it in this camera. This allows the camera to automatically judge how much shadow detail and how much highlight detail it needs and compensate for it uh, on the fly. You can use it in auto like I tend to use, or you can manually adjust it too that helps for technical stuff or also helps for creative purposes. Through the regular menu, you can even adjust more than just dynamic range. There is highlight and shadow tone values that you can play with, sharpness values more than any other camera. This allows you to build your own custom look inside the camera so that when you set it back to those particular settings, you've got a very unique photographic style that's built into this camera. So you don't have to goof around playing in Photoshop or Lightroom to add your style. You can do it inside the camera. I love that. You know why? I'm allergic to Photoshop. I do. It makes me scratch and sneeze. Ugh, hate it. Does this mean that those of you that love to shoot raw files and love to process raw files on your computer are going to hate this camera? No. 
But there is no raw conversion software that offers all the controls that are found inside the camera. Now, you can process the raw files through the usual software apps like Photoshop and Lightroom, of course, but the film simulation modes and some of the special imaging component adjustments that I am really attracted to are not accessible through those software apps. It does come with a copy of Silky Pix for raw conversion, which is slow and difficult to learn. <laughs> it does a pretty mediocre job. Ouch, sorry Silky Pix users, but hey, at least I didn't call it Silly Pix on TV like I do around the studio. Working with you. Now hold on, there's a darn good reason to shoot raw with this camera, okay? Say you shoot a raw file of whatever. The X-Pro allows you to pull up the raw file inside the camera, then make any of those ultra groovy adjustments you want to, like, oh, messing with the D-range or the film simulation or, of course, exposure and color, those kind of things. Then save those as a JPEG inside the camera. Now, the display screen on the back of this camera is ultra premium, so this could be one of the nicest display screens you'll ever see. That means one raw file allows you to make a version that's Velvia with bold colors and lots of contrast, then save that. Then make one that's got the soft detail of Astia or the richness of Provia films. Oh my gosh. The picture quality from this camera is worth the slow autofocus and the steep learning curve any day. The color values in the film simulation modes the layers of lush tonality punctuated by brilliant detail found only by using premium lenses coupled with a matching sensor inside the camera, and those internal dynamic range processors and all that wonderful image processing inside create first-class images under a wide variety of lighting conditions. This camera is heavy on the photo side and light on the video side. Sure, the video looks good at 1080p and it does autofocus while shooting video, which is a problem for some cameras, but there's not a lot of options for file setup when it comes to video. And we found that the sound of the autofocusing while you're shooting video is picked up by the microphone on the camera. That's tough to overlook. Mirrorless cameras are all about shooting in low light conditions with no flash, having confident autofocus and predictable auto white balance in both photo and video modes. That's why I'm drawn to them. This Fuji camera has ISO settings that range from 100 to like 25,600. We found that there's literally no difference between ISO 200 and ISO 1600, so pick any one you want, very little difference in quality. Also, very little difference in quality as we step up from 1600 to ISO 3200. Then it does an okay job when you sneak up to 6400, but that's the end of it. The super duper high-end ones, don't bother, unless you want kind of gloppy looking art files. Now, the auto ISO settings are really good because they allow you to set a limit on how high you want that camera to rise up. Now, if you're stuck in the old school way of thinking that auto ISO is just for point and shooters, think again. Pros who discover auto ISO and shoot an aperture priority to control their depth of field will use auto ISO with a limit set to typically 1600. Some will go a little higher, but they'll get great fast images much quicker than using any DSLR. Come on now, try it. You'll see. Here's an image that I shot at ISO 3200 that you'll see is really nice. And as we peer deeply into the file, we will see that there is noise and there is artifacting, but it's honest. Now, I've chosen not to use any noise reduction software for these images that I'm going to show you, but you certainly could. And we have tested that these files respond very well to things like Nick Define and Imaginomics Noiseware Professional. And you can pretty much get rid of that noise if that's what you're into. For me, it's okay. I like that organic feel of a little bit of noise. The only thing better than the low noise on the color files is the low noise on the black and white. Oh my gosh. This camera is a black and white machine. Look at this. I shot this at 11 o'clock at night, downtown Chicago, and look what happens when we dive into that file. Can you believe that? Remember, these are JPEGs, no RAW. So who will be happy spending $1,700 on the body and another 90 bucks on the grip and $600 per lens? Pro shooters. 
Pro shooters that want to glide through a wedding reception and shoot fast, flashless, capture the moment style images will adore this camera. Also, old fart photographers like me who remember the power of the Fujifilm brand from the film era will find this camera engaging and stimulating and intriguing. Weekend photo geeks who want a more organic photo experience, moving up from film maybe to their first digital, and who don't appreciate the glossy Sony and Lumix cameras of the world will like this. And people who can drop 2200 bucks on a camera, you're going to like this too. Landscape and nature photographers that want a portable way to hike and to shoot museum quality images that print perfectly to premium inkjet prints will find this a wonderful alternative to the big beefy DSLRs. Finally, the Leica shooters who want to use their lovely Leica lenses on a camera body that has performance that, you know, the Leica M8 and M9 can only dream about will find this to be a wonderful, wonderful way to create images as long as they can breathe without that red dot glistening on the front of the camera body. That's going to get me in big trouble with the Leica Mafia. Who's not going to like this camera? Photo enthusiasts who want a simple, easy to learn, easy to grow with camera system should avoid this camera because the X-Pro assumes that you have a pretty solid background in image control and you shoot on a frequent basis and you know a little bit about some of the settings in the camera and on a computer. Also, photographers that need a wireless TTL flash or high-speed sync flash should skip this camera too. And folks who want to explore deeply the blending of still photos and video images in the e-products, the electronic products that I write about so often on the website, would probably be better off using one of our other highly recommended mirrorless cameras. I appreciate what Fuji has created here, and I look forward to the lens line expansion. I see later this year we've got a handful more lenses coming, including a really nice zoom. And I cheer Fuji on for raising the bar by building this camera. It's a bit of a risk. This is not a mainstream camera. It does, however, push that envelope a little bit in this migration from DSLRs and upper end point and shoots into mirrorless. Lots more real-life mirrorless camera and other photo product reviews coming your way on this channel. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.